Thinking about replacing your old optical visor? Or maybe you're going to purchase your first one and you're wondering why the price ranges from ridiculously cheap to very expensive. And what about all those magnification ranges and the various available options? Well, for the answer to these questions and more, stick around and we'll review three of the most popular styles available today. Before I go on with this comparison re and review, I'd like to point out something that is probably obvious, and that is that one of these things is not like the others. The visor in the center is not new, but the two on each side are. I bought the white ones for the purposes of this review because the one in the middle is so old it's actually worn out and I have to replace it. The gray one is a Donegan Optivisor that I bought 40 years ago. Uh, for some aircraft maintenance inspection work that I was doing. And I can't remember exactly how much I paid for it at the time, but it was 30 something dollars, which uh, definitely wasn't cheap. Now, it's of course more expensive today, and it is in fact the highest price of these three sets that I'm reviewing. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that price is always an object, so when it came time to replace this Optivisor, I decided to look around and see what was available. And, of course, there are several options, and most of them are much cheaper. So much cheaper, in fact, that I decided to buy a couple of the more popular of the newer, lower-cost styles, and then do a good review and comparison before I made my decision whether or not it was worth it replacing the original Donegan. Personally, I get tired of a lot of reviews of products that are mostly opinions, uh, so I decided to try to make this quantitative by assigning point values to the key factors. As we will find out by the end of the video, this isn't a perfect system, but it definitely did help me make some uh, key decisions. Now let's meet the players in this three-way competition. First up is the Donegan Optivisor. It's first because it was my first purchase. I bought this 40 years ago and I've been using it almost daily ever since. This product has been around for a very long time, since the uh, 1950s, I believe, and I purchased uh, this one 40 years ago, as I mentioned earlier, for some inspection work I was doing on airplane. And of course, it didn't take me long to realize it was great for hobby use, too, and I was building scale models at the time, and this thing made me a much better modeler. As for features, well, there aren't really many. Uh, you can tilt the lenses down. I mostly use that for tilting them up to get them out of the way when I'm not looking at close-up work. And of course there is a uh, adjustable headband. Turn a knob to make it uh, smaller or larger. This one came with one lens and you can change lenses. They're held in with some snap pans. And I eventually bought an extra one because I needed higher power for my mechanic work. It came with the number 5 and I put on a number 10 and then I got to the point where I enjoyed having that kind of magnification so much that I just left it on. Uh, there at one time was some padding on the front band. I can't blame it after 40 years for giving up. And the uh, tilt feature has worn out. There isn't anything I can do to uh, make this tight again. I've tried all sorts of options but the plastic itself is just worn away. Once I snug down those two nuts, it will stay up for a few minutes, but then it quickly uh, drops back down, and that's become so annoying that I just have to replace it. Next up is another visor style magnifier, and I don't have a product name to give you because it's distributed through several uh, national suppliers, uh, most prominently Hobby Lobby and Harbor Freight. And frankly, the main reason for my choosing it is that it's the lowest price uh, optical visor I could find. The normal price at Harbor Freight is $15, and they're often on sale for $10, which is what I got this one for. You just can't beat a price like that for these kind of features. It shares its basic design concept with the Donegan Optivisor, meaning it has a headband and a tiltable lens assembly. Uh, the difference on this one, the main difference with the headband, is that it has a lot more padding and you uh, would expect it to be more comfortable, and it is. It also has a tilt feature, in this case 
it's adjusted with a couple of uh, serrated knobs on each side, which hold it very securely in place. And the size is adjustable with a friction knob that has to be uh, snapped in and out after you've made your adjustment. The lens assembly at the front has a uh, very bright LED light feature, and below that is a folding uh, lens assembly so you can add or subtract uh, magnification values. To reach the highest magnification level, there is a swiveling monocle uh, which drops down in front of your right eye to reach the highest values that this visor can magnify to. And last but not least, we have the awkwardly named Yachtosun magnifier visor, which really isn't a visor at all. It's more of a headband with a magnifier attached. This magnifier has a lot of features in common with the Harper Freight model, uh, meaning that it has multiple magnification ranges and has a light included. The lens itself is tiltable as is the whole light assembly, so you have a lot of variety of positions here. The headband has a small amount of padding and there's a little nose bridge like a pair of glasses to support it uh, firmly in position. Now there isn't any real adjustment for size, it just expands or contracts to fit your head and it's held in place by a rubber band on the back. Just like the one on the Harbor Freight version, there is a light and it does have several brightness settings. The lenses tilt up and out of the way when you uh, don't want to be looking for magnification. Also similar to the Harbor Freight model, you have a choice of magnification levels, only instead of all of the lenses being mounted to the uh, headband itself, this one has replaceable lenses of four different magnification levels. I just naturally go to the highest level all the time and leave it there, but if you do want to change it, it's very simple. These things snap in and out very quickly. They're actually so easy to change that I was worried that they might uh, fall out easily, but so far they haven't been a problem and I've been using these for six months. So now that we're familiar with the candidates, let me review the point system that I'm using to rate them. It's not complicated really. I just assigned point values that were divisible by three so I could easily assign them to the three visors I'm testing and then assigned double point values for the factors that I considered the most important. How I chose those factors isn't necessarily arbitrary. I consider optical quality, uh, magnification range, and comfort and convenience to be the most important things for any visor. But since two of the visors have optional features, to be fair, I had to add at least uh, some points for those features. And also I had to add points for price for the simple reason that some people consider that to be uh, a very significant factor. In my case, uh, I wasn't so concerned about price because I simply want a visor that's going to do the best job and even if I have to pay more money, I'd be willing to do that. For the first test of optical quality, the Donegan Optivisor wins and that shouldn't be too much of a surprise because it is an expensive unit and it has a glass lens. Now I should point out that there is a less expensive version that you can buy with a plastic lens, but I haven't tested that and I'm comparing the Optivisor with the glass lens uh, as a sort of gold standard for this type of magnifier. As my test for this category, I used a small model railroad car in 187th scale that has a lot of fine detail on the underbody. And then I look through each of the visors at the same location. To get these comparison photos, I put my phone camera up to the lenses and took each of these photographs in turn. Now the differences on the video aren't that great, and that does tell you something, and that is that all three of these visors do an adequate job, and you'd have no trouble using any of them. When you're using your eyes instead of a camera, however, there is a very slight difference between the three uh, visors. And the Donegan Optivisor was just a tiny bit clearer and crisper uh, than the other two models. It was a little hard to choose between the Octosun and the Harbor Freight as to which would be uh, second and which would be third. But in the end, I had to decide in favor of the Octosun because you're not looking at it through a monocle. 
And while it's true you can just simply push the monocle out of the way and use one of the lesser power lenses, I was doing this test at the maximum magnification of each of the visors, and so that's the factor I chose. If you don't need the monocle and you don't need that level of magnification, then I suppose the Harbor Freight comes out on par with the Octosun. Magnification range means the highest and lowest magnification values and the number of magnification steps in between, and this was an easy one to assess because the Harbor Freight uh, wins very easily. It's got the highest magnification and the greatest number of steps in between. Now it achieves all of these levels by those fold-down lenses that layer one over the other, and I believe by using multiple lenses it increased the distortion slightly and contributed to the slightly less optical quality. But nevertheless, this category is magnification range and the Harbor Freight visor wins. In second place is the Yocto Sun visor and it lost out to the Harbor Freight visor for two reasons. The first being that the Yocto Sun visor has only five levels of magnification compared to the Harbor Freight visor which had six, but also the Yocto Sun visor only magnifies up to 4.5 compared to the Harbor Freight's maximum magnification of 11.5. It is important to remember, however, that that maximum magnification comes using the monocle lens uh, that you can only look through with one eye. In last place is the Donegan Optivisor, and it's last for the simple reason that you only get one lens with the standard purchase. Of course, you can order lenses with different magnification at additional cost. But even if you do, changing magnification levels is far less convenient than it is with the other two visors. The next category is comfort, convenience, and security. And I'll admit there's a certain amount of subjectivity here for the simple reason that all of our heads are different and what's comfortable on my head might not be comfortable on yours. But if you're wearing something on your head for long periods of time, or if, like me, you're going to be using this thing in restricted spaces like I was when I was looking around underneath the instrument panel of an airplane. Well then size and weight are hard factors that you have to consider. And furthermore, even if the visor is small and light, it's going to drive you crazy if it doesn't sit securely on your head and if it's always falling off. The size contest is no contest really. The Harbor Freight visor is massive compared to the others. The Octosun visor is clearly the least bulky of all. Size effect weights, of course, and the small Octosun visor weighs only 4.6 ounces. The Donegan Optivisor, a mere 6 ounces, but that Harbor Freight Gargantua weighs a whopping 11.6 ounces. But even without the weight advantage, the Octosun visor is just more comfortable because it's so secure. Once you slip this on your head, that rubber strap in the back and the nose piece keep it firmly in place without being uncomfortable. This next category is optional features and you'll notice that I rate it at half the points that the previous categories had for the simple reason that I buy a magnifier visor to magnify and if it does anything else, well that's nice, but it's not really necessary. The main optional feature that we're talking about here is a light, and the Harbor Freight wins because its light is brighter and displays a wider beam, which I think is fairly obvious in this video. They do both have adjustments on the lights so that you can operate at different uh, brilliance values, but that kind of mystifies me because I figure if you need a light, you need a light, and who's going to complain about the light being too bright? But nevertheless, they are adjustable. I should mention before we leave this category that even though I did give this one to Harbor Freight because of the brightness of its beam, I have to point out that the Octosun has a very interesting feature in that its light is rechargeable using a USB connector. But in the end I decided that function was more important so I gave the extra point to Harbor Freight because its light was brighter. The last category in our review is price and I put it last because Regardless of which of these visors you choose, you're going to get good value out of them and you're probably going to keep them for years. But somebody has to win and somebody has to lose in the price contest, and in this case the loser is the Donegan Optivisor, 
at nearly double the cost of either of the other two visors. Now to be completely fair, I am using the original OptiVisor with the glass lenses as my price comparison. But even their newer, less expensive version that has plastic lenses is still significantly more expensive than the other two visors that we're testing here. Second place in the price category goes to Yachtosun at a price of approximately $25 depending upon shipping. And the winner is the Harbor Freight version at $15. And in fact, you can often beat that price with coupons or sale prices. In fact, I got mine for $10. But if you don't happen to have a Harbor Freight nearby, you might be able to pick one of these visors up at a slightly higher price from other outlets. And with that, we've reached the end of our visor magnifier comparison and review, so let's add up the points and see who came out on top. Well, the points total goes to Yachto's son, but not by much. And if you'll notice, the point spread between all three of these products is actually very small. But that doesn't surprise me. They're all good visors, and you'll get satisfactory performance from any one of them. But now that the points are in and the objective part of this review is done, I'd like to add a subjective comment or two about these visors in daily use. I use a magnifying visor in my work around the shop at least an hour or two of every day. And I've kept all three of these visors above my workbench for the past six months with the intention of using them all interchangeably during that six month period to give each one a fair evaluation. But after a couple of months, I realized I'd forgotten about that part of the test and was just naturally reaching for the Yocto Sun visor without even thinking about it. Now, I can't tell you why exactly, because it was entirely subconscious. It could be because it's so light or that it fits so snugly on my head. But regardless of the reason, I find it kind of interesting that my natural preference is for the one that came out on top of the points anyway. And that's it for this video. As always, thanks for watching. And if you found it beneficial, please help us out by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. We'll see you in the next video, and until then, remember, if you want a better life, do it yourself.